What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Rocky Vlogs. This is Jacob. Uh, we're in a band together. And we also drift cars together. And in an effort to drag everyone into all of the expensive hobbies that I have, uh, he bought a... I bought a rocket. <laughs> It's the Fusion Rockets SBR LDRS 40. Slightly awkward. The whole Brothers Organ brandishing on there is not exactly accurate anymore. I have one of these two. I'm building mine to do the competition, the highest altitude competition. But Jacob is just trying to get his level one. So we're going to do a nice simple build just like we did with this White Wolf. We're using all hobby epoxy and Scott recommends 12 minute, which I didn't even know was a thing. But we got five minutes, all right, I'll babysit and it'll be okay. So, uh, we were just reading through the instructions and checking out all these layouts and everything. Making sure we got everything where we want it. But, now we're good to start. So, the first thing you have to do is sand this and the inside of the rings. You can take the seat if you want. The inside of this or the outside? I think the illusion that this area is nice and clean is going to be broken with this video. Because <laughs> my other videos in here, it's like just this. This is the table. And then everything slightly off camera is just chaotic. This used to be my sticker making area, as you can tell by all the vinyl everywhere. But yeah, it kind of got worse while I was building the Mach 2 because I got Dixie cups and popsicle sticks everywhere. Now you're going to take your 54 millimeter motor tube and there's a ruler over there pick whichever end you feel like should be well actually let's make sure these rings go on first because <laughs> they were they were a little tight mm-hmm that's what i was afraid of usually i'm like well it's fine you can just peel the glassine layer off but that's going to get rid of um your red line it doesn't really matter if you have that or not but we yeah it's gonna take the line away what's Sorry, the line for uh, it's just like uh it was a good reference for marking points but yeah. this works better anyway because this stuff was a little more rough and mm -hmm. the epoxy will stick to it better i see so like when you fiberglass cardboard tubes you peel this off mm -hmm. anyway and I had never fiberglass big tubes before I did that iris that's sitting by my drums. And it used so much epoxy because the tube just eats it. Oh, sucks yeah. it all in. If you're watching this, I'm sure your instructions are fine. But we're going <laughs> to set this up a little different. So, uh, you're going to want to mark half an inch from one end. Whichever end you feel like should be the bottom. That's all entirely up to you, bud. That's the beauty of rockets. You get to pick stuff. Half an inch? Yeah. Okay. Oh, all that's right. a crook line. Now, measure the root of the fin. The, this part? Yeah, the long part. Mm -hmm. That's the part that goes inside. It is four and a half-ish. A little okay. bit over four and a half. So now make a mark four and a half inches further up than that. So five inches from the other Okay. Two. Okay. Get off of here. Oh, I put them in wrong the wrong spots. Oh well. That's all right. Yeah, that's so five now, from the bottom. In theory, if you put your middle ring and your back ring on at those marks, mm -hmm. the fin should fit just between them. Okay. Which is what you want. Which one is the middle? The middle ones of the strap's going to go underneath it, and the back one is the one that doesn't have strap-related things at all. Takes a little finesse. So the middle one has to go... To that mark, yeah. And the reason we did half an inch from the back is that's how much tube you need left over to glue on an aero pack. That makes sense. Okay. You're going to push it to the other side. Like, the ring should be... Th this side of the ring needs to meet the line. Oh, okay. So, like... Up there. Yep. Okay. And then bottom? Yep. And that one you can basically put, like, right on the line. Mm -hmm. Now, make sure your fin goes through there okay. It's a little... 
right. so close. So just move the ring up a little bit. But we need it to be like tight, right? Yeah, it doesn't. You're not doing any internal fillets on this. That's so not a big deal. It's just a good habit to form. Mm -hmm. It's it's a squeeze, but it fits. All right. Well, we're at it. Test all the other things. Yeah. Yep. Oh god, it's all crusty. All black marks. Yeah. Oh, it's dead. All right, so you want to make a mark where that's going for sure now, just, you know, where the ring's going. Oh, I, I see what you mean. The new one. Okay. All right, and then something I like to do just because, since it's where it'll be going anyway, is slide that in so that the rings go on the outside of the fin slots. Press against the motor too. Well, they did fit. <laughs> this is why we test fit things. Try and keep it, you know, contained to one spot roughly. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, the clock starts now. So I have to. Which one should I start with? Do the bottom one. This one's the bottom. Yeah. So slide it down just a little bit. Yeah. Where's your mark at for that one? Uh, right there. Okay. So now just apply, you know, kind of a, a thin bead all the way around it. Well, it's not really thin, but. Yeah, you, you can spread it out. Oh, that one's actually the top one. Oh, well. I see. Well, that works also. So to keep in mind, just try and keep that one lined up with the strap hole on the middle one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just slide it back down over the epoxy. Where'd my mark go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Now I'm trying to twist it to. Oh god. Alright, now make sure it's flat. Looks pretty flat to me. Okay, that's nice and dry. Because once this is in, it's you know kind of impossible to take it back out. Yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up some more epoxy and you're just going to put it underneath that on both sides there. Uh -huh. You just gotta make sure that this stays straight because you don't want that getting in the way of where your fins are getting glued down. Oh, okay. That makes so, sense. We'll use a little popsicle stick this time. A little, little baby. Well, it's gotta be straight, don't it? Yeah, mostly. Does it matter how big the knot is? No, that's fine. All right, and then, like, what I'll do, some people, I don't probably don't like the concept, but for the that top one since nothing's getting glued to the tube. You just put tape over it? Yeah, wrap a piece of tape around it too. Just for a little peace of mind. Can't do it with the bottom one because you know the fins are getting glued there. So. Yeah. Around the whole thing? Yeah. You just pull it tight. Ladies and gentlemen, he's gluing the motor tube in. This thing's gonna be so crooked. <laughs> if you made it crooked, I'd be kind of impressed. <laughs> No, I can't reach far enough. It's good enough. Well, when this one inevitably catastrophically fails. But I don't know. You have to push it pretty hard. Or just have things not attached. Yeah, that's kind of a long shot. Your biggest limiting factor for sure is 8 inch ply fins. They're, they're not like super, super long, but they will wag if you start getting it too fast. And then from there, it's only a matter of time. Oh, and then usually what I do is when I put that in, I have I use leftover epoxy to glue the first fin on. But I'm not going to rush you like that since we got five minute epoxy. It's not that long of a wait. Should I make sure a fin still fits? Before yeah, I, I make sure all of them fit. Oh, open your mouth. 
This is the family friendly channel, come on. You're gonna have to do a lot of bleeping. <laughs> That looks good. Mm-hmm. Ah, see, you have some rocket intuition. Why? You tested the other a, fin. A different, different fin. Slot. Yeah. yeah. That one is good. You do keep putting them in backwards. That would be good, though. That's, like, the most unique design is one of the competitions. Yeah. I flip the fins. <laughs> Listen, man. All right, time for baby's first fin. <laughs> it goes in that way. Yes. Try to be, you know, somewhat. A little uh, conservative. Yeah. Oh, that's not conservative. <laughs> I know it came with a fin guide, but I always like to have the fins drying like this so that the weight of the fin is like holding itself down, you know? Last fin on. Is this straight? I think so. I think it's a little. Oh, yeah, that one's got some wiggle room. What do you think of the uh, top secret? Peace reveal you just saw. It's ignorant. It's gonna be on so Patreon, ignorant. but yeah, we got the first piece of our uh, Airfest build, me, Taylor, and Matt. So uh, that's gonna be on the Patreon, and it's even more insane than I anticipated. Let's try and get that flat. So you're gonna take a pos pickle stick, and you're gonna get it all nice and sharpy. -y. All on the edge. Yeah. Like this. The yeah, the rounded thing. edge. And then I'm just going to demonstrate what you're going to do. Oh, I broke the popsicle stick. So you go like this to make the fillets, right? So you're mm -hmm. just going to apply a decent pressure all the way down so it makes lines. Like that? Yep. Now do the other side. Use the end of the popsicle stick that's not broken. If you can see it, it's yeah. fine. All right, so now lay pieces of tape along those lines. Now, so the fillets are gonna taper at the edges, like, you know, kind of wrapping around. So we can go ahead and fold these edges. And then we're gonna put a piece of tape over the top of these ones mm -hmm. and leave, you know, maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch, quarter inch or so of runoff room. Like, a little bit further up. Like that? There you go. Okay. You haven't fun yet? Yeah. Actually. Fills it in. So I go Yeah. You're gonna want way more epoxy than that. Oh. Okay. You can just mix more for the other fillet. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Those are pretty good. He's gluing both plates in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> the crap goes wild. I'm gonna put it a little bit lower than where it needs to be. All right, Jacob. What's up? We got your shock cord glued in, or your coupler glued in, shock cord's tied, shock cord is glued in on this side. Oh, focus, please. So we gotta drill some holes for your rivets, but other than that, you're good to slide it together. So if you want to see your rocket completely assemble it for the first time, You can learn the finer techniques of shot cord packing some other time. Well, it's got to come back apart. Oh, no. Oh. 
get in there. Get in there. There you go, dude. Sick. That's cool. Oh. oh. <laughs> Bunch of ruler. Oh no. I would drill it on the line though. That way it lines up with the fin sort of. That's right. Here, pull the head of it out. Do it in two pieces. <laughs> I know how to make these shear too. Drop a 60 pound rocket on eight of them on the Bonneville Salt Flats and all eight of them will break. Is that in? No, it's not Yeah, it'll pop, it just... Wow, God. There it goes. There you go. All right. Now we do it again. Those are a nightmare to get out, by the way. Cool. All right, Jake, what do you think? It's neat. I can't get the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. That's <laughs> yeah, it's cool. All right, what motor are you going to fly it on? I have no idea. <laughs> we got some more educating to do. <laughs> Rocky people, leave in the comments what motor you think you should fly this first, level one. And I told him it should be light enough that we could technically fly it at the park and it came with a 98 millimeter, or 98 millimeter, Jesus oh Christ, God. 29 millimeter adapter so we could put a G80 in there or something, maybe even a lighter G, it's not that heavy. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys, um, I'll see you in the next one.